on the list we have interesting conversation with kevin hart via deadline where he basically speaks about cancel culture and makes some really um poignant prob well makes some really uh good points regarding the whole issue and how he's dealing with it and again i have a lot of respect for kevin hart um i'm a big fan of his i know a lot of people don't like his stand-up comedy but i think i'm a big believer in everyone playing their part in an, in, a, in an industry i'm really big, big big believer in like the bigger person owes it upon themselves to carry themselves a certain way so that the people below or that people that are not on that kind of superstar level have no excuse so uh, kevin hart legitimately seems like a pretty decent guy he gives all his friends jobs um he's a pretty good family man um of course you know a blight from the extramarital affairs that he was involved in the scandal but for the most part he seems like a pretty good dad um tries to keep his household under some kind of order gives jobs to his friends um is loyal to his friends and just gen seems like a general hollywood good guy a good egg right which i think is a good thing because it means that if you're an open mic comic if you're somebody just on the come up you have no excuse to be a dickhead if kevin hart isn't one so i think that's the role that they have to play in society like let me set an example at the level that i am at so that you can't sl and again even the, the work ethic thing right he works out a lot he runs um he does um he, he provides like mo what fitness motivation via his instagram um loads of shows coming out at the same time four or five movies in the same year blockbuster stuff we're doing press runs and tours all over the place like he's one of the highest working people in showbiz so it goes so it's again such an example of people coming up saying there's no excuse if kevin hart can do it at his level you can do it at your level but i'm also a fan of how he's attacking cancel culture in the wake of what's occurred with ellen degeneres as you guys know ellen degeneres has been accused of cultivating a toxic work environment um ex-employees current employees and previous guests have basically said she's a bit of a bitch she's not a nice person to work with which you know is fairly obvious i think is it jimmy kemmel or somebody else who's the other one is it jimmy kemmel might be jimmy kemmel there's another guy who's always laughing and giggling i've got his name the american presenter but there people always say he's got a bit, he's got a bit of an alcohol problem right he likes the booze a bit too much which makes sense doesn't it? i think anybody that's on tv five days five nights a week laughing and smiling with celebrities and having to pretend they're the happy-go-lucky guy you're probably gonna have to turn that down or basically drink yourself into oblivion to have maintained some kind of balance it's hard to stay on and be that person consistently all the time right which what which is you know which probably leads to those odd interactions people have with celebrities who are like oh i bumped into so-and-so person he was a dick it's like no they weren't a dick they were just turned off of what you usually see in them they'll turn down volume wise or level wise from what you're used to seeing them as isn't it so i guess with and the generous some people were maybe under the false impression that because she's all about you know be kind and be nice and she's dancing around and doing push-ups with michelle obama on show and stuff that she's somehow that same person day to day or working on the show behind the scenes and that's not the case you'd imagine running the energy generous show would require someone to be a little bit of a tyrant be a little bit of a rule with an iron fist now again i'm not saying every environment should be like that but i think you have to be a little bit naive to expect it to be like all champagne and high fives when you're working for the energy generous show there's going to be some conflict there's going to be some issues some things happen untoward but of course some of the allegations coming out against the energy general show and engine specifically are a bit mad because some of them involve sexual assault sexual misconduct and that sort of stuff. that's when it gets messy but i think in terms of ellen being a bit of a bitch i don't think that's enough to cancel somebody i think if somebody's mean if somebody doesn't you don't like their attitude that is the way it is you work in hollywood and hollywood is notorious for having the very the most um uh entitled uh horrible people that you've ever met right people that you probably wouldn't want to spend any other time outside of the time that you're spending with them on set with so you know it's it's a bit uh, it's a bit naive to expect that difference um from any from someone like ellen so kevin hart sat down with deadline and basically spoke about some of this so his headline says kevin hart and cancel culture bad environment and defending ellen and nick callan so i liked a few of his comments he's made here i'm going to quickly read them to you scroll down da, 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 da. where is it here how it's going through effectively we've seen the world he talks about how he um oh so he says how if you go back to, about those comments he made uh or comments that resurfaced prior to him getting uh announced as the host of the oscars right one of his dreams that he had on his bucket list and he basically said in the interview asked him if you could go back knowing what you know now would you handle the scandal differently he said yes if I could go back, I don't think the hosting the Oscars would have happened because I still think that moment was tainted. I think that my apology from my past remarks would have come sooner. Instead of me thinking that people still had the wrong idea, I would have said, look, 
I want to say that I'm sorry once again. I want people to understand that I don't feel that way. These old remarks, and even then, uh, I don't feel that way. I was looking for a laugh and I thought this was the way to do it, not realizing the pain and the hurt that it would cause. Moving forward in the last 10 years, I haven't done anything remotely close in the future. I never will. I'm not an advocate of any type of violence in any way, which is true. I think that's what you have to do. I think, un unfortunately, cancel culture is annoying, but I do honestly do, I think for the most part, a lot of people do do don't really address it well enough they sometimes get cancelled just through pure fear they panic they don't know what to do but i think most cases unless it's something really heinous i think in most cases if you're able to come out in front of it and apologize wholeheartedly and maybe re make reference to your track record since that occasion has happened or maybe talk about you maybe you know donate in some sort of charity working to uplift some voices you're usually going to be okay the issue you have is um whoever's is employing you as in a network are they able to kind of not panic within the first 24 hours because that's what happens if networks networks usually panic they see all the f the the kind of backlash happening on twitter which again is a small uh, representation of the global audience but they see all the backlash on twitter they see all the hashtags and they panic and then they cancel you first it's not actually the public the public don't mind kind of you know raking your feet through the coals but they're waiting for you to apologize really but it's the network that gets panicky because they feel as if like if they don't make a decision or make a move it's going to affect how the public sees their other shows and then maybe start attacking all the other shows on their network but if your network is able to kind of just breathe relax and and, and give you time to respond quickly within the first 48 hours usually you're able to kind of bounce back from it from what i've seen it continues said i would have said that i would have said that sooner but i thought that people were automatically saying that i was something that i'm not and that's where the confusion and misconception comes from of course it's a it's a little bit of an ego there as well believing that you know people should know me i'm not going to say that but i agree with what he's saying there uh da, 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 how he affected the world he makes a good comments there let's go here uh da, 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 where's, where's i want to see here uh, ba, ba, ba. yeah it's good here's where it is so from here it said how would you describe the path you took to come out of this he said it's not being afraid to step in your own shit. I took responsibility and in taking responsibility, I wanted to basically take a second, acknowledge and look at myself and then go, okay, man, there's two steps back. So it means you've got to figure out a way to take six steps forward. How are we going to do that? We're going to do it by being better. We're going to do it by being genuine, by being yourself and not running away from the conversation because most people do. Most people run away from their problems, from mishaps and mistakes and I believe in facing them head on regardless of the magnitude of it, which is very true. It may be a very good um, lesson for people in Hollywood or LA comedy scene now going through their issues where you know Chris Lee has essentially put his head down in the sand and disappeared from the limelight Brian Cannon is weirdly trying to defend himself by doing more podcasts which is strange uh but I get it but not really addressing it head on I guess maybe if there's some legal issues attached to it and there's a pending court case coming maybe that makes more sense but I would really advise if you are involved in some kind of public scandal that you should come out um, and attack it head on as much as you can because if anything you should be under no so you should be under no illusion that your name and your reputation is already ruined anyway from the accusation alone some people are just never going to believe you just from the fact that you've been accused of it so you owe it to yourself and your career to try your best to get rid of that narrative as quickly as you can or to basically put your best foot forward whilst the pressure is on so you can at least have something to hold on to or something that you can go back to once this scandal is kind of over but the more you keep your head down in the sand the worse it is people never forget the internet always remembers and they're always going to bring it up whenever you come back um, into the limelight it says here i've been an open book thus far in my career and it got me to where i am and i can't be an open book but but when it's convenient for you you can't do that i've had uh, i've made myself available i've exposed myself on all levels so that's not something that i'm ever not not going to do i made that bad so i made that bed and i'm going to lay in it my growth and my progression after mishap and mistake is one that's on display as well i think here what helped me was just being vulnerable and real it says continues here it says obviously counterculture is serving a need for justice accountability in our society that's historically been ignored have have you uh, but you've been outspoken about it the negative side of it and heart says when you talk about the state of today we're becoming comfortable with giving this cancel idea in culture the level of attention that we are 
We're letting people control and dictate the start and finish of people's lives. And if we're in a time of finding any type of solution to the fight of equality and change, which seems to be a global fight now, a global fight for, of people being treated fairly, change, understanding and accepting the past, but preparing for a better future, that means we can't be in a position where we're contradicting ourselves, which is very true. And I think that maybe speaks to the whole like statue debate in the States at the moment, right? There are, you know, these Confederate statues in places that they probably shouldn't be on display without any context some people want to tear them down completely and erase them from history some people want to put them in a museum but this probably goes to show that the latter idea of putting them in the museum and giving some sort of context makes more sense so that we know so that you know as a country where you've come from and how far you've come from that place as opposed to just completely deleting it and same with people someone can make a mistake say something really um inconsiderate really mean really cruel uh um do something do something you know abhorrent but there needs to be a road back to redemption. There has to be. If not, then you might as well just kill that person. You might as well just get it over with and, you know, essentially um, remove them from society altogether, right? But I think we all make mistakes in our day-to-day -day lives. Uh, why is any different for a celebrity has always kind of baffled me um, in that regard. Maybe it's this false idea that people have that they're somehow role models and they can't make any mistake. But being a role model would be to be vulnerable and to be open and to be showing for everybody your mistakes and your wins. That was really being a role model. Being a role model and trying to feign some level of perfection is neither here or there. It continues, said if people have done something wrong, the idea of cancelling those people and ending whatever career or thing they have, is, is if it's just over, then what's the teachable moment for them? What? It's over and then you can't do nothing else for the rest of your life because you made a mistake? Which is, again, I regret I uh, agree with that. So what happened to the days of making a mistake, learning from your mistake, not doing that and educating others uh, on what not to do because of your mistakes? Isn't that what parenting is? Isn't that what the world of raising a kid? Um, how do you know what to tell your kid to do or not to do? You have to be in a position of experience to say, hey, don't touch that stove because it's hot because you touched it when you were, when it was hot. I can't give you that lesson if I don't have that experience. Hey, in the corporate world, this is how you move and maneuver and you make sure you do it accordingly. You have to make sure that you treat every woman with respect you cut you make sure that you don't act like a certain way in this and that and it's based off what knowledge experience is based off growth is based off understanding and again that's the issue that's really the problem as well with the left at the moment because the left seems to be the perpetrators of cancel culture but it also seems to be the people who are lacking any kind of empathy which they also they also accuse the right or conservatives of lacking empathy for society or for people less off well left well off them them but it seems like celebrity wise if the person does something they don't agree with they cancel them without even batting an eyelid right without a second thought they just completely cancel which is really bizarre um it's not the kindest thing to do and again doesn't really go about addressing the issue or changing that person's mind especially this in this day and age where you can find fringe voice of support on the depths of the internet it makes more sense to try and welcome them back into the fold so they don't become they don't go off to some radicalized part of the internet and become even more uh radicalized by a fringe group of people who are hell-bent on kind of upsetting the balance of society in my opinion he said if everything is done in the way of nope no nope no more you're fucked you fucked up get out of here and don't do anything else the rest of your life but suffer what part of the conversation are we on like does everybody deserve the same level of treatment i don't think so if that's the case then everybody will be in the same type of jail cell you'll put everybody in there regardless of what the fuck they did you're telling me they all deserve to be in the same thing are you going to put the guy with a parking ticket in there with the guy that's fucking guilty of rape or murder exactly does he belong in that same cell? He doesn't. At that, at some point, there has to be a middle ground, uh, and everything, and the right thing there. And right now, there isn't one. It doesn't exist. Um, it worries me that we're getting comfortable with that, and by and by all and by all means what i'm saying doesn't mean that if something is wrong and someone is done wrong at the highest level, they shouldn't be dealt with accordingly. But by all means, I stand behind that. But I also can stand behind being uh, saying everything is not on that level. Everything isn't that which is true like we have to be able to deal with things and accordingly i guess it it goes back to that statement that what did he make is it matt damon about uh trying to differentiate between touching somebody's bum and raping somebody and the women went completely nuts in it but there has to be a differential there has to be a, a difference between both crimes and you have to do your best as society i would i would assume to try and to try and convince that guy who touched someone's bum uh without their permission 
to not do that and to know why that's a wrong thing to do so that they don't end up being the raper right you don't want them to progress to that level you want to try to hit them uh, or to get them at the moment where they did the least amount of damage so that they don't go on and ruin more people's lives down the way by doing something completely heinous but if you counsel somebody regardless of that and they don't learn from that experience you're leaving up to the you're leaving up to the gods in terms of how their life um uh, goes from then on and again it doesn't really i don't think it gives it serves as a good example to anybody else going forward really it says da, da, da. what do you said what do you think should happening i think it's it's about no let me see the bit about um him and meg him and ellen i think the same thing yeah so in recent weeks you've spoken out um about your friends including nick Cannon and generous you have found themselves under fire why has it been important to defend them even at the risk of putting the spotlight back on you he says, well, I don't lose sight of the definition of friendship. In our business, it's one thing that people don't really hold on to. There's a lot of friendships that are fake and there's some that are real. In my case, the ones that are real are the ones that I'm always going to be adamant about speaking on behalf of. I know the people that uh, I know the people that both of them are and knowing the people, all I can say is my experiences with those people. That's not to take away from other people who are saying what they have said and what they've done. It's just to highlight that what I'm saying and I know and I can speak of on their behalf, which is all anybody wants. And again, this is the problem I've had from the beginning with that whole Crystal Air situation, right? No one is excusing what he's allegedly personally done, right? No one's excusing it. But to suggest that his friends shouldn't stick up for him as a person, as a human, from what they've seen is ridiculous. Because if they're not sticking up for him, what they're basically saying is that we have seen him do something untoward, but we were too scared to say anything because he gave our podcast views and he allowed us to collect money that we would we turn the blind eye, which isn't the case. Most likely than not, if he did something bad and did something that you would describe as grooming or you know accosting younger girls, more likely than not, he probably did it outside the purview of his close friends, right? He probably did it in secrecy as proved by some of the DMs going around allegedly, right? If that's the case. But if it's not the case and he's maybe being painted in a bad light, you owe it to him as a friend to stand up for him as a to stand up for his character and say, hey, the person that I know is this person that isn't do, that isn't taking away from their experiences. I'm backing up the person that I know. Because at the moment what happens when someone gets cancelled, it goes completely silent. No one says a word. Everyone just kind of backs away and kind of remains quiet and lets the person just basically drown in public. When really um, just a week ago you see a million people at their house hanging out with all these different celebrities and then suddenly a scandal hits and it's over when really you'd, you'd, you'd think especially in the real world right if your friend went through a really rough breakup or you know had suffered some form of domestic abuse or whatever it may be that's the time you step up as a friend right that's the, in their moment of real need when they're down the dumps that's when you say hey come and sleep on my couch you need some money to pay rent here's some money oh you lost your phone here's who you can use like when they really need that help that's when you step up as a friend but in hollywood it seems to be the complete opposite when a person gets in a real scandal and an issue that's when you back away completely because you got to protect your own nest egg which is really mad it continues it says in times like this I also know how dark it gets. I know how lonely it gets because I know that these are the times when people just turn their back on you. So for the ones that you love and the ones that are close to your heart, you just want them to have some support when it seems that there is none out there and just who I am as a person, which is really, really, really heartfelt and goes to show that that image that we saw previously of Ellen and Kevin Hart dining was a, a basically a press run, right? He did that on purpose. He wanted paparazzi to take a picture of him. They could have easily went and dined in some nice you know um air-conditioned private room somewhere they've got enough money between the both of them to kind of get a hold of some place somewhere they can get a chef to come in and you know help them out with food but he purposely went and sat down on the balcony somewhere in the middle of la in a in a bright outfit with Ellen generous knowing four people are going to take pictures because you want people to know publicly hey i'm supporting you i've got your back and imagine what that does to somebody imagine how how that makes their day how that makes their week and again she could be a dragon she could be a complete beach to work with right b-i-t-c-h she could be the horriblest person to work with but the ones that don't have never seen that side of her owe it to her to support her in this time especially the ones who have gotten deals and you know met the love of their lives and maybe got a part in a film based off that show they really owe it to her to step up and say something but they don't because they're all cowards they want to look after their own career but then the moment she's back on that show and everything gets forgiven guess who's the first person to knock on the door and say oh i always knew you were okay come on so, so and again he's risking a lot too on his side because he's got his own skeletons that he doesn't want to unnerve so it, this 
this does says a lot about his character as a, as a guy. It continues here, it says, that goes for anybody across the board and that I, that I consider a friend and that's not a big group of people. Everybody, everybody doesn't get that conversation and that feeling from me. But the ones that do, I'm serious about it. I'm true to it and it doesn't mean that you have to speak on behalf of the problem. It doesn't mean that you have to disregard the things that others are saying. It means that I just speak on my relationship with that, my friends when it comes to Nick and when it comes to Ellen, I know who they are and I know who, who they've been for years and I've been around them and I can only speak to that. Those are two of the most amazing people that I know. Wow. Again, that's what a friend is. That's what an actual friend is on. And again, it's rare to find it, but there we go, man. Kevin Hart's a real one. Say what you want to say about his comedy, but you have to respect the guy, man. The guy is an absolute real friend. That's what real friends should be doing. Again, he's doing it in public, and I'm sure there's some people doing it in private, but I still think in this society, unfortunately, with people unfollowing people in public and making it known that the friendship is ended and friendship is ended, it, it is a big deal when someone does it in public. It probably means more. Because it sends a message to the industry. People are watching, agents are watching, publishers are watching, um, departments are watching, right? Networks are watching everything that's going on online. They're keeping abreast of the situation they're currently getting. And it's no surprise now, also another story came out that, oh, they're firing a couple of ex producers on the Ellen Generous show, but Ellen hasn't said nothing about leaving, right? So they've obviously been able to gauge the climate and they've seen the, the shift tide. And mostly it's due to, because of Kevin Hart's support. Because Kevin Hart has been staunchly supporting her and really saying, no, she's my friend. And what from what I know of her, she's not that person i can't speak of my experience she's always been nice to me i think it's really helped to kind of change the narrative of the conversation and maybe ease the pressure so much so that most likely than not you're probably going to see ellen back on the ellen generous show sooner rather than later which is good regardless i don't watch the show right? i'm not really bothered but anything about james corden as long as we don't get james corden on there i'm completely fine but let me know in the comments down below what you think um would is ellen sticking up for is kevin hart sticking up for ellen a bad thing is he being a good friend um should more people in hollywood be doing this for their friends that do get involved in controversy now again it's easy to do with ellen because it's a workplace dispute sort of thing it's something that should be handled behind closed doors anyway it's not like a messy sexual thing which you know her producers are being accused of but still um what do you think of kevin Hart's response and um let me know in the comments down below